Good morning, you're watching the Channel M Breakfast Show on Thursday, the 12th of March. I'm Nikki Dean. And I'm Byron Evans, and it's been said I've got a long face, but not as long <laughs> as poor old Mayflower here. And she's feeling a little bit glum. Lots of undue attention seems to be coming Mayflower's way, so much so that the man who owns Mayflower in Southampton is considering putting up a sign outside a field saying, Mayflower is stocky, not stuck. He <laughs> is furious because the fire brigade keep getting called out to rescue Mayflower Mayflower, as passers-by think, she's stuck in the mud. She's not actually stuck in the mud. She's just very short with dinky legs even and looks even shorter when she stood next to the other ponies in the field. Oh, bless her. She's lovely, isn't she? Cute. Poor little thing with short legs. Well, I've picked out another animal this morning just for the sheer hell of it. It's just really cute. <laughs> There you go, look at my mate there. Looks a little bit like Byron, actually. I mean, of a morning when he first arrives before hair and makeup. That's Hassani. Um, he was born in San Francisco Zoo three months ago. There's been a competition held locally to name this little beauty. Look at his inquisitive face. He looks deep in thought, doesn't he? Um, anyway, the competition, the names were written on melons. The five top names were written onto melons, and his father picked out a melon and then he was named Hassani. There you go. You can see uh, separated at birth here are Byron. And Hassani. There's definitely a, there's definitely something there. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> You're slightly hairier. Let me show you this one. Love this one. This has got me ex well excited. Man beating shark reads the headline. Diver kills 12-foot jaws into our battle. Basically, a group of divers were out hunting tuna. Um, and then Craig, who, uh, who you can see battling with this shark here, saw uh, the tiger shark go for one of the other divers in the party. So he shot it with a harpoon. That wasn't enough. This was a resilient, tough shark and kept going. So... He battled, duked it out with the shark for over two hours, as the story says, until he ev eventually overcame the shark, beat it with his bare hands it's and amazing, a knife. Isn't it? That's a story to tell again down the pub, isn't it? Absolutely. He also said he's got a lot of respect for the animals, didn't really want to do it. It was either him or the shark, so they ate a bit. Of Just it. to show respect. Yeah, Not yeah. Quite following that. Uh, okay, okay, in a few minutes, all the latest sporting headlines uh, with Hammerhead Mike Bradley, plus our Michelle heads off to the Portuguese paradise. But first, let's get the latest headlines with James Webster. Good morning. The top stories so far this Thursday. Talks will take place here in Manchester later to look at what more can be done to stop our children getting too fat. Figures show a quarter of adults and one in six youngsters are now obese. It comes as a leading doctor suggests a tax should be brought in on chocolate to cut down on the number of people who are overweight. The Change for Life programme's arriving in the area to explain to families more clearly what they can do to eat better and get more exercise. It'll partly celebrate the achievements of one family whose two boys from old have lost four stone between them. Every morning it was go to school and then come home and slouch on the couch and watch TV. And that's pretty much everyday life and that before we started MEND. So now we feel a lot better. We started in the September 2007 and the rest is really history. They've really, really enjoyed it. We changed our whole way of eating, our whole way, you know, of exercise we'll walk everywhere now when we can through mend you know we've been able to enroll in um, like I say the, the exercise classes sometimes it was uh, an hour in the classroom where we as parents learnt with our children how to feed our children the right food they're just a lot more fitter healthier and you know active but they've done really really well Gordon Brown will be addressing more than 100 business leaders here in Manchester in the next few hours. The Prime Minister is announcing extra legal and financial advice to help companies export their goods more easily. He'll tell them that those firms which can find new markets overseas are more likely to get through the recession. Supporters of a plan to bring the Royal Opera House to Manchester are putting more pressure on the government to pay for it. The Arts Council wants ministers to help foot the £110 million bill for revamping the Palace Theatre. It will become a home for the Royal Opera and Royal Ballet in what's been called the most significant development in the British arts for a generation. 19 weeks of performances will be staged here a year and 500 new jobs will be created. A teenager has been robbed while sitting on a bus in Stockport. The 17-year-old says he was intimidated by two men who got onto the top deck of the vehicle in Bramall and started hitting him in the face before stealing cash from him. The pair then sat with him throughout the journey, carrying on hitting and pushing him. They eventually got off near an entertainment complex in Pars Wood, leaving the victim on the bus. 
Baggage handlers at Manchester airports could go on strike during the busy Easter holidays. Ballot papers are being sent out to more than 100 workers from the ground handling firm Swissport by their union Unite. Bosses at the firm made 35 of their staff in Manchester redundant in January. They work for carriers including Virgin, Emirates and Monarch. A funeral director from Pemberton in Wigan is now able to offer a much more regal service. He's just discovered that the hearse he's bought is the same one that carried the Queen Mum to her final resting place. Nina Warhurst has been on a royal visit there. Three weeks ago, Brian Halliwell decided to upgrade his fleet of hearses and ordered a 99 Damler from a dealer. Inside the glove box, he found the car's registration details as well as a printout of photographs from the Queen Mother's funeral. And to his astonishment, the registration of the hearse that carried Her Majesty matched that of his new edition. And how did you feel when the penny drops when you realised the Queen Mother had I been in your car? totally gobsmacked, actually. I, I would have bought the hearse and paid a premium for it, you know. Don't tell Mr Wilcox that who I bought it from. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it's something to be proud of. We know we've got a little bit of history here in Wigan. Would you mind if I had a look inside? Be my guest. Well, I'm impressed. It's pretty spacious, isn't it? She had a lot of room on her last journey. She certainly did, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a, a massive deck, really, you know, one of the, the biggest decks that, uh, that are available. And what do you think it means to local people to know that their final journey will be in a hearse that a royal was in? Because she was very popular. She Queen. was a very popular lady, the Queen Mother. I think um, if it's good enough for the Queen's Mother, it's good enough for anyone in Wigan. Should be the other way around, Brian. It should be, really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, would the people of Wigan fancy their final journey in the royal hearse? Not yet for a while, but... <laughs> <laughs> when the time comes... When the time comes, I don't mind. But, uh, like I said, not at the present, no. Possibly, yes. Yes, I think so, yes. A royal burial, then, wouldn't royal it? Royal burial, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You wouldn't bother. I don't care what they do with me when I go. <laughs> do you want to book it in advance then? No, no, they can sit me at the top of Purple Hill. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Yeah, why? Yeah. Well, it's uh, royalty have been in it, hasn't it? So that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? I don't know. I'm yeah. not thinking about my burial yet. Like when I get a bit old. <laughs> now, I'm sure people who are preparing for the big day might be thinking, is it going to cost me any more to use this hearse? <laughs> This hearse will be available at no extra cost. Right. No extra cost at all. Might be the closest I'll ever get to a royal as well, Brian. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> Nina Warhurst, Channel M News. That's all from me for this morning. Don't forget to join me for the Channel M lunchtime news at 12 noon. And Andy Crane's here as well with more from 5 o'clock tonight. Look. Nicky Dean was so excited about learning Michelle's break in the sunshine over in Portugal. She's legged it to the uh, airport and left her shoes behind. <whistles> Let's take a look. arrived in the picturesque town of Belmont in the central region of Portugal and this historic building is where we'll be staying. Set on the slopes of the team, the Convento de Belmont is a typical Portuguese posada. The posadas were created in the early 1940s by government minister Antonio Ferrero, who had the idea of creating hotels that were both rustic and genuinely Portuguese. There's now over 44 posadas installed in historic buildings. Now, Belmont is most famous for being the birthplace of Pedro Cabral, the explorer who discovered Vera Cruz, better known to us today as Brazil. In fact, when Pedro landed, he planted a huge cross into the sand to mark his discovery of the land and also introduce Christianity to the region. That was back in the 1500s, and 500 years later, the Brazilians gave it back to Belmont. In fact, here it is today. Just an hour's drive away is the beautiful town of Viseu. Unspoilt from its medieval days, Viseu has some fantastic architecture and a picturesque cathedral square, home to three huge and historical buildings. The Twin Towered Cathedral, which gives the square its name, the striking church and the Greco Vasco Museum, devoted to one of Portugal's finest painters who lived in the town most of his life. Plus, if you're a lover of fine wine, it's worth noting that Viseu is home to Deo wine, a drink synonymous with the region. 
The Portuguese are also big fans of their food. The local cuisine is not for the calorie counter though. Rich dishes of sausage and rabbit dominate the menus and they boast pastry based desserts which are hard to resist. When in Portugal, And if you fancy a change from the city life, then the central region of Portugal boasts an amazing mountain range, where locals often enjoy a completely different lifestyle. We met this delightful shepherd who thoroughly enjoys the simplicity of his life out here, tending to a herd of 20 sheep and goats, only leaving to stock up on bread and water, completely at one with nature. If you're more of a thrill seeker instead and want a fix of adrenaline during your stay, then you needn't head any further than the mountain of Serra della Estrada. Upon scaling its dizzy heights, the local adventure group recommends a great way to get down, which will definitely leave your heart pumping. Well, I've really enjoyed my stay here at the central region of Portugal. You've got everything to experience, from rest and relaxation at the wonderful hotels and restaurants to the adventure of abseiling down a cliff face. And if you thought the Algarve was the only haven for beach lovers, then you'd be sadly mistaken, because just an hour's drive from Porto Airport is this beautiful coastline Costa Nova, the perfect place for a romantic sunset drink. Saúde, Portugal. Before we hear from last night's goal scorers, Manchester United's win over Inter Milan at the Theatre of Dreams last night. Let's get some news from Stockport County, Mike Bradley. Yeah, yesterday we said how Jim Gannon went into the every opposing team's dressing room at Edgeley Park prior to a game and apologised about the state of the pitch. He's now gone to the board and asked that Stockport County play their home games at an alternative venue, such as the poor state of the pitch at Edgeley Park. And if that happens, I think that'll be a first in British football. If he gets a bee in his bonnet, Jim Gannon makes sure... Everybody knows about yeah, it, doesn't and he? And he makes life uncomfortable for everybody. Yeah, and rightly he's so. He's right, though, isn't Absolutely he? rightly yeah. so. Yeah, he's a clever guy and he knows what he's talking about. So, fair play to him this morning. Uh, Gary Cook, Manchester City's uh, executive chairman, is in the news this morning. And he's rather glad Kaka didn't sign for Manchester City because he believes if Kaka had signed, he would have struggled to have ousted Stephen Ooh. Ireland from the side. So, when those reports get back to Milan, I'm awaiting with great interest their reply to that one. Yeah, yeah. Only one of them wears <laughs> Superman and the crackers. That's to be remembered. <laughs> right, OK, let's turn our attention to last night's uh, Champions League class and uh, Manchester United through to the quarterfinals. Absolutely, Vidic and Ronaldo the goal scorers and afterwards Channel M's Andy Dickman caught up with the pair of them. Um, first for the goal I'm very happy, uh, it's like defender and uh, uh, I'm happy to have the team to, to have the advantage uh, uh, and to be more relaxed in the, in, in the game. Uh, like the team I think uh, in the, some part of the game we play well but uh, in the end uh, in some part of the game as well we are a little bit nervous. Uh, what we need to think about and uh, to improve. But uh, in the end of the day, we won the game and uh, we're looking forward to the next round. First half, I think, is we didn't play fantastic. But uh, you keep uh, create a few chances. And second half, I think we, we play better. We scored the, um, the second goal. Um, I think after the second goal, we killed the game. After we keep the ball and we control more the game. And um, it's fantastic. Looking forward to Liverpool on Saturday now? Yeah, I look forward. Uh, it's a good chance. You, you, we know if you win, um, Liverpool is a little bit out. Didn't know, but uh, you know, if you win, you have a good chance to win the title again. We know they have uh, 11 games to left the, 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 the Premier League. But um, if you play like that, then we played uh, last week. So I think we have a good chance to win the, the Premier League again. Well, it was 2 0. It was another clean sheet for Edwin van der Zaar, and Andy Dickman found him in good spirits. I think it was a very hard game uh, tonight. Uh, I think we were the better team in uh, in Milan two weeks ago, and today we we rode our luck a little bit with uh, the ball on the, on the post and uh, on the crossbar. Some chances they had, and uh, yeah, I think we were a bit sloppy sometimes in midfield, uh, losing too much possession of the ball. And uh, so at the end, uh, yeah, happy with uh, that we went through, but uh, should have been uh, should it, should not have been that this difficult. Still another three trophies to play for. How much are you and all the players enjoying the, the massive challenges that are ahead of you this season? I know we take it game by game, and uh, it's uh, it's a massive game against uh, on, on Saturday again against Liverpool. And uh, yeah, we uh, we just have to make sure we uh, we recover from this uh, from this uh, from this one, and uh, and uh, tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock we start focusing on Liverpool. 
Memorial Balance. We also caught up with a rather subdued Patrick Vieira. <coughs> We knew that uh, how good they was, and uh, of course we knew that it was uh, it would be quite a tough and quite difficult game. But in the end, I think we play our chance, and um, and we lost. So we are quite disappointed because I really believe that we we have the team to go uh, to go a little bit more forward. But that's the way it is, and sometimes we just have to accept it. When they scored that early, I think that changed the um, the game really. Because at nil nil, I think uh, we will still have a uh, chance. Of course, the uh, the first goal we concede uh, was really important uh, psychology for them. Do you think they can go all the way and win it again now, Manchester United? We never know. We never know. Well, sticking with European footballing action, uh, Manchester City are in action tonight against Albu. That's right. Uh, Rubino plays. That's the early team news from the City of Manchester Stadium. But uh, Mark Hughes, he knows his team aren't going to have it all his own way. They're a good side. They're very well organised. Um, have a set way of playing, uh, make sure they get people um, back in position quickly when they lose possession and um, away from home, in Europe, in fairness, they've, they've done really well. So uh, I've been really impressed, obviously, seeing a number of their games and um, they have a goal threat and um, obviously in the last round they, they acquitted themselves very well. So um, we have to be mindful that uh, they're a strong team. Um, obviously they. In the Danish league, they're, they're below the, the teams that we've played already in the competition, but I don't think anybody should place too much significance on that because I think they're acknowledged as one of the stronger teams in the Danish league. Well, if you join Mike and I on tomorrow's breakfast show at 6.30, hopefully we'll be bringing you the highlights of City's win over Alborg. Hopefully not tempting fate there. Now, after the break, American rock and roll band The Parlour Mob announced their debut tour of the UK and uh, they'll be joining us in just a couple of minutes. See you shortly. <laughs>